Welcome back to this Getting Started series. So in the last video, we looked at how to forecast your sales with the income component. This time, we're going to get stuck into the expenditure side of the business. This is quite a big area, and if we return to the Add Components panel, we can see that Bricks has three different types of components in the red zone. This video is going to focus on the cost of sales component, which handles your direct or variable costs. We're going to briefly jump ahead to the yellow inventory component, since it works in a very similar way to cost of sales, and it makes sense to cover, to cover them together. Now, cost of sales, as the name suggests, is directly linked to how many sales you make each month. I'm selling branded sports gear, but before we can sell each unit, we have to buy the materials in the first place, and the more we plan to sell, the more we have to buy. Let's return to our income component. Now, ideally, it would be handy if we could automate this so that it'll buy based on how much we're selling. We can do this by adding a linked cost of sales component right here. Click this plus cost of sales button and you can see it adds another component into the plan with a link indicator to show it's referencing this product for its calculation. Note that you can also add an inventory component linked in the same way. Don't worry about that for now, we'll take a peek at that later on. So click the new cost of sales component to bring up its forecast options. A percentage of income means that if the linked product is making a thousand pounds per month in sales and you set this to 30 percent it'll forecast 300 pounds worth of cost every month if your sales vary over time the cost neatly adjusts itself to match you can also set this to cost per unit which again is referencing the amount of units forecast in the income component and multiplying it by this cost to get the total cost each period Finally, you have the manual cost option. This doesn't reference the income component, but allows you to enter custom amounts if you want complete control over the cost associated with these sales. I'll set this to cost per unit, save and close, and you can see the red is now merrily going up and down, matching my predicted sale seasonal sales pattern that I mapped out last video. Okay, so you may have noticed that there is a group cost of sales component in the component panel. This has identical options. However, it's not linked to any particular component. Instead, it's looking at every income component in the group at the same time for its calculation. This is a time saver if you know the cost of sales will be the same for multiple products or if you just want to get some quick numbers rolling without having to set up a new cost component for every product you've added. It's particularly handy for general sales charges. For example, if you're selling through a payment gateway that has a 5% charge on all the transactions. Right, so I mentioned we're going to skip ahead to the yellow asset components. That's because inventory, which is used for modeling items you might be storing in a warehouse or stock cupboard before you then sell them, shares many of the same options as cost of sales. It can be added and linked to income or added to the group level exactly like earlier. It can even be set to percentage of sales, units or manual override, again exactly like before. Now the first main difference is in your reports. The inventory component actually shows the value of your stock on the balance sheet because it assumes you maintain a certain amount of stock at all times and that's worth something to your business. You can change how much you store with this additional control that allows you to choose how much stock you store in advance. So if you store six months in advance, it'll take a good look at what your income component is forecasting as your sales in that period and buy six months worth. It'll also keep your stores topped up each month, so you'll always have six months worth of stock at any one time. Remember. Set it to manual if you want complete control over your stock purchases. Finally, you also have the option to write off a certain amount of stock each month to model damaged items or stock that just didn't sell and has been discarded. So this covers direct costs and bricks. 
In the next video, we're going to finish off the red section of the component panel with the operational costs and employee salaries. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.